Have you ever gone to a camp? They say that every camp might not be complete without bonfire. Bonfire keeps you warm during cold night. You tend to feel warmth in a cold camping night because you receive heat from the bonfire, which is the heat source that increases the temperature of the surrounding. The terms heat and temperature are often associated with the concept of hotness and coldness of an object. The definitions of these terms are mostly interchanged and represented the meaning of the same thing. However, in physics, these terms have differences at a molecular level. In this video lesson, we will explain the difference between heat and temperature at the molecular level. And we will also explain the effects when heat is transferred from one body to another. A material can be described by its temperature. Just like length, mass, and time, temperature is a fundamental quantity of nature. Temperature is usually associated with hotness or coldness of an object. However, when you touch an object such as hot coffee or an ice-cold water, varied responses can be obtained. Some may say that the coffee is warm. Others might think it's hot. In the same way, other people might have varied reactions on how cold the water is. In a microscopic level, temperature is defined as the measure of the average translational kinetic energy of the particles in a body. It is related to the random motion of the molecules in a substance. For instance, as a substance is subjected to higher temperature, its velocity increases. Thus, the molecules of this substance will have greater average kinetic energy as it receives heat. In macroscopic level, temperature is a property of a body which determines whether an object is in thermal equilibrium or has the same temperature with the other objects. The instrument used in measuring temperature is thermometer. When a thermometer is in contact with an object, Energy will flow between the object and the thermometer. This means that the thermometer not only measures the temperature of the object, but also measures its own temperature. Temperature is a measured quantity that requires a standard measurement. To quantify temperature, the standards used are degrees Fahrenheit, degrees Celsius, and Kelvin. The first scale among the three was formulated by Daniel Fahrenheit, which was based on ice salt solution. In converting degrees Celsius to degree Fahrenheit, we use the conversion factor degrees Fahrenheit equals degrees Celsius times 9 divided by 5 plus 32. Today, the Fahrenheit scale is relegated to American weather reports and thermostats. Unlike the ice salt experiment of Daniel Fahrenheit, Anders Celsius used pure water in his experiment wherein he assigned 0 degrees Celsius to the temperature where pure water freezes and 100 degrees Celsius to the temperature at which pure water boils. In converting degree Fahrenheit to degree Celsius, degree Celsius equals degrees Fahrenheit minus 32 times 5 divided by 9. This scale is most commonly used today. A further improvement in temperature scale is called the Kelvin scale, which was named after William Thomson. His proposal states that the lowest possible temperature of zero implies that the particles would stop moving or the substance has absolutely no energy to give. Celsius and Kelvin scale are related through the expression K equals degrees Celsius plus 273. Although the Celsius scale is commonly used, the Kelvin scale is considered as the standard unit in SI. One practical application of temperature is a fever. A fever is a body's way of fighting against bacteria and other harmful invaders. Body temperature increases as an indication of fever as a sign of incoming illness or infection. 
Internal energy is the grand total of all the energies in the body. It is the sum of the kinetic and potential energies of all the particles making up the body. In order to compare internal energy accurately, mass, temperature, and the phase of the substance must be taken into consideration. Movements of particles become faster as heat energy transfer. Molecules in high temperature move faster than in low temperature. Heat is known as the energy in transit for it is being transferred between bodies from high to low temperature. A body contains internal energy but not heat. When an object is heated, energy is actually given off to the object. For example, when stirring a cup of hot coffee with spoon, the spoon absorbs the heat from the hot coffee. Another example is when the water releases heat to the ice. As a result, the ice will melt. We can also consider block A with higher temperature than block B. After a contact, heat will flow as it was transferred from block A to block B. After some time, the two blocks will have the same temperature or what we know as the thermal equilibrium. Since heat is the energy in transit, it has the same unit as energy. Calorie is the amount of energy needed to raise the temperature of 1 gram of water from 14.5 degrees Celsius to 15.5 degrees Celsius. One calorie is equal to 4.1868 joules. Heat may be transferred through conduction, convection, and radiation. Conduction is a mechanism of heat transfer that occurs within a body or between bodies in contact. Metals are generally good conductors because they contain free electrons that can rapidly carry energy from hotter to cooler regions of the metal. Since conduction needs medium for the transfer of heat, conduction through vacuum is not possible. Convection is the transfer of heat by mass motion of a fluid from one region of space to another. By natural convection, warm air rises while cold air sinks. Radiation is the transfer of heat by electromagnetic waves such as the visible light, infrared, and ultraviolet radiation that can propagate in an empty space at the speed of light. A body that is good absorber is also a good emitter of radiation. Heat may be absorbed or released by a body which causes changes in temperature, change in dimension, or change in the phase of the substance. The amount of heat needed to raise the temperature of a body is Q equals mc delta T where Q is the amount of heat, M is the mass of the substance, C is the specific heat of the substance, and delta T is the change in temperature. The amount of heat needed to raise the temperature of a unit of mass of the substance by 1 Celsius degree is called the specific heat. Quantitatively, it is the measure of thermal inertia. Thus, a substance with high specific heat is more difficult to heat up or cool down than one with low specific heat. Its SI unit is 1 joule per kilogram Celsius degree. As an object absorbs heat, there will be an increase in its internal energy. This increase will make its atom and molecules vibrate faster. As a result, the molecules tend to move farther apart. This phenomenon is called thermal expansion. Thermal expansion refers to the increase or decrease in every dimension of an object due to the temperature change. It is said that most materials expand when heated and contract when cooled. Linear expansion refers to the change in the length of a body when the temperature changes. But not all the materials change in size in the same rate. Some, 
easily react to a change in temperature while others don't. Coefficient of linear expansion is the property of a material to change its length due to varying temperature. Coefficient of linear expansion is dependent on the nature of the substance. Volume expansion refers to the change in the volume of a body when a temperature changes. When a cube is heated, each side of the block will increase. This will give the cube greater volume. If cooled instead, it will shrink. Volume change for solids is slower than liquids. This is caused by the lack of rigid shapes of liquids. Another effect of heat is the change in phase. Latent heat is the amount of heat needed to change the phase of a given mass of a substance. When a substance undergoes phase change, Heat is either absorbed or released at a constant temperature. The amount of energy absorbed or released in the form of heat is used to rearrange the molecules of the substance instead of changing the temperature. When the phase transitions involve melting, evaporation, and sublimation, heat is absorbed at a constant temperature, while for reverse processes such as condensation, freezing, and deposition, heat is released. In this lesson, you learned that high temperatures result in faster movement of molecules. Heat may be transferred through conduction, convection, and radiation. And heat may be absorbed or released by a body which causes change in temperature, change in dimension, and change in phase of the substance. If you like more science videos, make sure to subscribe to this channel. Thank you and always remember that you are all awesome.